Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Gregory Wilpert coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. A recent report from the World Health Organization indicates that depression and anxiety disorders worldwide are at an all-time high. It seems, though, that most of the increases in mental disorders have happened in so-called first world countries, such as Europe and in the US and Canada. Why is this? A study that was released last month in the Bulletin of the American Psycho Psychological Association tries to provide an explanation. According to the study, which looked at college age populations in the US, Canada and Britain, perfectionism has been on the rise throughout the 1990s, 2000s and 2010s. The study relates the rise in perfectionism to in the increasing role in neoliberalism in these countries and also shows how perfectionism has a negative impact on mental health. Joining me to discuss the study is one of its authors, Thomas Curran. Thomas is lecturer in the Department for, for Health at the University of Bath. Thanks for joining us today, Thomas. Thank you for having me. So your study focuses on perfectionism and its rise between 1989 and 2016. So first, what do you mean by perfectionism? How do you define it? So perfectionism is a personality uh, characteristic and uh, it has a number of different elements. Now, the first element of perfectionism is the one that I guess most people commonly associate with perfectionism, and that's this idea that we have high levels or excessively high levels of personal standards and uh, we strive for flawlessness so that's that's called self-oriented perfectionism and that's the that's the first element of perfectionism uh, the second is a uh, social uh, dimension of perfectionism and this is the idea that uh, we perceive that our uh, social climate, the pe people around us in the immediate environment and also the broader environment uh, is excessively demanding of us and the third element is the uh, dimension of perfectionism that's directed outwards onto others. So it's this idea that we expect others to be perfect and we have excessively high demands of others. So together, those three uh, elements are what we understand uh, when we talk about perfectionism. I understand that what you did was uh, a study of studies, basically, uh, which is to look at 146 research projects or something like that on this topic and then reanalyze their results to come up with this broad scope and time frame. So let's turn to your main findings. Uh, that is that perfectionism has been rising since uh, 1989. What types of perfect? You mentioned three different kinds. So what kind of perfectionism has been rising and um, in which countries has it been rising the most? So we found that uh, all three uh, of those, uh, those dimensions are rising. Uh, but what's really interesting is the dimension of perfectionism that has uh, undergone the largest increase, um, twice that of the other two, is socially prescribed perfectionism. So this, this as I said, that, that dimension that's associated with the perception that uh, demands placed upon us are excessive. Um, now, uh, those are the... Uh, those are the broad headline findings, and that's the main one. Um, and we controlled for country, so uh, be between country differences. I mean, these are American, British, and uh, Canadian college students. So we did control for country to see if there's any differences in those trends. Uh, and we didn't we didn't find that when we control for country, uh, any differences emerged. So essentially, these trends are consistent across uh, across the nations in our in our analysis. So, and you relate the rise in perfectionist attitudes to the rise of neoliberalism during the same time period. What exactly is the connection here between neoliberal, neoliberalism and perfectionism? Well, we, we, were, we were very cautious about uh, using the term neoliberalism because it, it can be uh, considered a bit of a nebulous term. Um, but but uh, short of anything better, we, we wanted to use this phrase because what we mean by neoliberalism is this idea that, uh, well, it's essentially a shorthand description uh, for a political philosophy which essentially suggests that the market and marketized forms of competition are uh, the only organizing principle of human activity. And so what that, what's essentially what that's meant is that since the neoliberal era and the uh, market reforms of Thatcher, Reagan, and uh, Mulroy in, in, in Canada, um, is essentially a uh, introduction of marketized forms of com competition into civic institutions where they never used to be. And uh, one of the key institutions uh, is education. And we see we see this, uh, you know, the, the market in education for things like standardized testing, uh, 
uh, and the incessant standardized testing of uh, young children from very young ages, because tests give us metrics that allow us to rank, sift and sort. And so we can get an idea of which kids are best performing, which kids are worst performing, which kids are, uh, are um, uh, going to the top grades and therefore the top places in university. It's a very useful way in a market based society uh, to organize. But the problem with this, of course, is that what we're doing is we're teaching children that they need to compete against each other in an open marketplace. And so we are essentially instilling a sense of social anxiety, a social, social hierarchy. We're, we're suggesting that inequality is virtuous because those that have done well deserve the rewards. And so essentially what we have now is a, is a culture where we are continually comparing. And it isn't just in education. Uh, the explosion of social media has, has put this uh, this idea of social comparison on steroids and essentially is, is given a, 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 a platform at a societal level uh, for people to engage in social comparison, uh, continually uh, working out where we where we stand relative to others. And, and the link to perfectionism here is is that if, if we're continually worried, about how we uh, perform relative to others. And if the consequences of failure are, ca are so catastrophic, uh, that, that both economically, but also for our sense of self-worth, that's to say, if we, don't, if we don't get the perfect score, if we don't get a high score, if we don't rank better than others, then we feel worse about ourselves and our, and our self-esteem. Then what that means is that we, we, we tend to cope in that culture by developing perfectionistic tendencies, because of course, if we have high standards, then we're unlikely to fail. And if we're unlikely to fail, we're unlikely to feel badly about ourselves. And also we're unlikely, uh, or we're, we're more likely to uh, ensure that we have a higher market price. So, so that's why we link it with neoliberalism, because it's uh, because of this idea that we, uh, uh, we're almost forcing kids to compete with each other and to cope perfectionistic tendencies are emerging. Well, I think that really makes sense, uh, but it seems to me that uh, you define neoliberalism mostly as a culture uh, or uh, and less so as a particular practice. And I'm wondering about that because, um, you know, you talk about uh, attitudes about neoliberal attitude towards uh, competition, for example. But uh, couldn't one perhaps also say that neoliberalism is a way of organizing society that is, you know, where the welfare state, for example, gets dismantled and uh, state functions are privatized. And that basically, in the end, uh, not just promote an attitude of competition, but actually do indeed force us to comp uh, compete against each other. So that, in other words, not just a culture, but also a social condition, if you will, uh, in which we live, whether we like it or not. Uh, and whether we share that culture or that attitude or not. In other words, could you say, uh, could it be also that the practice of neoliberalism is generating perfectionism and not just its culture? Yeah, and I mean, uh, it's interesting you say the safety net, um, because of course, uh, at the post-war settlement, there is values and, and um, in, in the UK, here we, uh, uh, Clement Attlee and uh, Ian Bevan, they, they invested heavily in, um, in uh, the welfare state and uh, they socialize the risk of failure right so we had we had the uh, we had a, you know if, if, if you if you were made unemployed or uh, you had health problems there was uh, the go the state was there to give you health care or was there to give you a hand up so that you could find a new a new place of employment so the the consequences of failure of course in that culture and that economic model are far less severe than they are today where you know there's high levels of precarity in the job market, uh, where healthcare is very expensive, and, and uh, thank goodness in the UK we still have uh, socialised health healthcare, but but that's not the case in the US. Um, and 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 so you're you're absolutely right. You know it isn't just uh, the culture, but it's also the physical uh, tangible uh, effects uh, on social and civic institutions, which I think also force us to um, to compete but also force us to fear the consequences of uh, economic and uh, image failure. And finally, um, just to return to the introduction again, uh, your paper relates perfectionism to mental health problems. What is the connection here uh, between uh, perfectionism and mental health? So um, the, the, the two main, uh, or the seminal work that's been done in this area has been done by um, mainly, uh, but there are other people I'm probably forgetting, but there are mainly two 
professors in Canada, uh, Professor Paul Hugh and Professor uh, Gordon Flett. And a lot of the early work, I mean, they've done a lot of heavy lifting in this literature. And a lot of the early work that they've done in clinical populations and non-clinical populations, but in clinical populations mainly, has suggested that perfectionism is a core vulnerability uh, to severe psychological illness. And, and the reason why perfectionism is a core vulnerability is because per perfectionism is focused. The whole drive and energy from perfectionism comes from all this effort, all of this drive um, and all of this need for validation comes from a place of trying to perfect an imperfect self, trying to perfect ourselves. And, and that's fine if, if we're getting positive feedback and if we're achieving, those things uh, are okay. But the problem is for perfectionists, because they have excessively high goals and because perfectionism is by definition an impossible goal, when we fail, because the consequence of failure is so catastrophic for our sense of self-esteem, because we tie in our self sense of self-esteem on others' approval and uh, a need for high achievement, then when we fail or when we are rejected by others or when we don't receive positive feedback, then we tend to ruminate, we tend to brood over those uh, what, what could have been otherwise or what we should have done. And over time, those very negative thoughts and feelings turn into anxiety, depression, and in the most extreme cases, suicide thoughts. So, um, so it's a highly damaging trait, and, and these trends uh, are, are quite worrying because of that. Okay, well, this is a very interesting study, I find. Um, thanks so much. I was speaking to Thomas Curran, lecturer at the University of Bath. Thanks again for having joined us today, Thomas. Thank you. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.